Hi, Deirdre McNamara here. Um, so we're going to start off uh, with the food database that we've just downloaded off the internet. And the first thing we need to do is to enable content um, and choose yes uh, to that. Okay, so the first um, uh, task is complete. Number two, create a query that will show you uh, what the uh, menu recipes are. So we click on create and queries we always do in query design. So I'm going to double click query design. Uh, now the two tables I'll need are the uh, menu items table and the ingredients table. They're the two tables I need. I'm finished adding tables so I'll hit close. So in here, uh, I want the the first thing I want is the menu item description, and I know that's in the menu items table. So I double click that, and we end up with the menu item description here, uh, the menu item ID. Um, so menu items ID, I double click that. The next thing I want is the ingredient name, so I double click that, and the next one I want is the ingredient ID, so I click that, and then I'll run the table. And you can see that I have uh, um, displayed all of the uh, ingredient items in here. Um, so the next number three asks me to adjust the query so that uh, we're looking for a particular uh, ingredient ID. So uh, in here we can go into design view and in ingredient ID we can type in uh, 249 was the one we were looking for. Okay, and run the query. And you can see ingredient ID, it's only showing me items where black peppercorn has been used. It's used in the chicken Kiev, it's used in the prawn cocktail and the ham salad and the lasagna, etc. OK, so it's just showing me recipes where a particular ingredient has been used. Now, a little nice feature you can add to that is that every time we run this query, it'll ask us what ingredient ID are you looking for? So if we go back into design view, in here, instead of just typing in the 249 in there, we'll use a squarey bracket and we'll say, enter ingredient ID. And close the squarey bracket, okay? And we can hit save. And we'll call it uh, find ingredient. And we'll call it query. And okay. Oh, sorry, I've done a roundy bracket as opposed to a square bracket. It should be square brackets in there. So I'll hit um, save again. Uh, it's keeping the same name and OK. OK, now I'm going to close that query and I'm going to open up the query. And as I open up the query, it asks me what ingredient uh, would I like? So, for example, uh, this time I might look for uh, what is it? Tomatoes, cherry tomatoes, which is 131, and hit OK. And now it's showing me that cherry tomatoes are in the lasagna and the salads, etc. OK, um, so that's uh, number uh, three complete. So the next thing we want to take a look at doing is just adding something to the ingredients table. Um, so to add an ingredient at the moment, at the moment we don't have a form. This is enter a recipe item, so we don't actually have a form in this particular version of the table yet. So at the moment to add an ingredient we just go into the table, we go down to the end of it and we uh, type in um, the particular item. So this one is garlic paste, it's, uh, it's going into the sauces category and seasoning sauces. So here I need to select that and copy it. And it's not great. We can just add it in down here. That's the category and it's garlic paste. Um, and it's probably by the gram. Um, and we're purchasing 400 grams and it's costing us uh, 2.5. Okay, and we hit save. So that's a kind of a clunky way to actually enter uh, ingredients into a database. So we're going to close that table and we're going to create ourselves. That's what number five is asking us to do. It asks us to create a, a form for entering new ingredients. So I'm going to click on create. Um, and as it happens, I've got the ingredients table selected here and I'm going to click on form wizard. Now make sure up the top it says table ingredients table. It's the form wizard table ingredients table and we want all of the items over there. 
and we click on next and we click on next and we'll call it the ingredients form and click on finish okay um, now um, the next thing we wanted to do was to improve um, the look uh, of the actual form uh, and we want to improve the category uh, button here at the moment you just have to manually type it and we'd prefer to have a drop down box so we're going to go click on view and design view we're going to click onto the category and then press delete on their keyboard and we replace that so we click on combo box up here combo box and then we click and drag from the middle across to the edge we choose the first option here and next from the queries we choose unique uh, category query that's the one we we'll, uh, want to choose and next we bring across category over here and next ascending by category and next we accept all of those that's what the drop down will be consisting of and next and we store it in the category these are a list of all the fields in the ingredients table and where will we stop this drop uh, store this drop down information we'll store it in the category field and next what will we call it we'll call it category and finish okay let's go back into form view again and see how that works and you can see there's a nice drop down box uh, that works very well there what we'll do is we'll go back into design view so click into design view and we're going to click on command button and click and drag okay in terms of record operations we're going to do add new record and when you add a new record it also automatically saves so we'll choose record operations add new record and next okay what do we want to appear on the actual uh, record okay and it will on the actual button sorry uh, we will say add new ingredient Add new ingredient that's fine and next and we'll call it add new add new button and finish okay so now there's a nice big button and we can increase it in size uh, in here and if we go back into form view again if we click on that at the moment we're on one of 239 we can click on add new ingredient and there's a fine big button here it takes a straight to uh, a new blank one which is the very last record in the ingredients table okay um, so that's us finished uh, up to uh, uh, point number eight and the next time we want to do, next thing we wanted to do was to create a report that shows us all of the recipes and whether they're gluten-free or not so I'm going to close that over I'm going to save it it's my ingredients form and um, to create a, a report I click on re create and report wizard not form wizard but report wizard in here uh, we want um, in the menu items table we want meant uh, menu item description in the ingredients table uh, ingredients table we want ingredient name and we want whether it's gluten free uh, or not and click on next it's going to do it sorted at the moment um, by uh, menu item description so we'd have lasagna or whatever up the top and a list of ingredients that are in the lasagna and click on next um, we don't want to uh, group it at any point so we click on next we'll sort it by ingredient name and next leave that alone and in here we'll have a uh, recipe and gluten free and finish and this is the report and at the moment it's slightly pushing the gluten free option out to the side so we're going to come out of print preview so click on close print preview go into design view uh, I'm just going to click that out of the way and the problem is that this is too close to the edge so we're going to move this that's the heading we're going to move that over we're going to move the ingredients over And we're going to move this little tick box over. Oops, missed it. 
and for the four. There we go. Move the little tick box over, and we'll actually stretch this out. Okay, and move it over a bit gluten free. Now I'm just going to change that uh, in color. I'll go to the home tab and I'll change the font to red for example and I'll change that font to red and I'll change that font to red. Okay and we'll go back into report view and you can see these are the items I made red. Ooh, the edge of free is being cut off. They're nicely in line in the middle of the page possibly a little bit close to the top. I move, might move them down a little bit. So I'm going to click on design view. Uh, gluten free, I need to stretch it out a little bit more. Okay. Um, and maybe I'll align it. Uh, sorry, format tab. I'm going to align it to the right. Okay. And this little box is up very high. I'm going to try and there, move it down a little bit, okay, and then go back into uh, the home tab and go into report view, okay, and that's looking uh, a lot better. Okay, that's the end of this video.